Gamer fitness is something that we've taken for granted for far too long. I have obviously some inflammation problems with my wrist, so that's something I have to take into consideration once again going to these games. So I think that's why the careers end is it's you know, it's hard. It's hard on the body, it's hard on the mind. But there is a problem and I think it needs to be addressed now versus later. It was readily apparent when we first started speaking with the Jones family that player care be a priority. We were both in agreement that we wanted to create something that was special, something that was extraordinary, um, and it was really the best place for any gamer to train. It's important that we take player care really seriously. Our job is not just to ensure that they're prepared for the next event, but that they're both prepared physically and mentally for what happens before and after that event as well. Yeah, I think players physically have to be, be wary that their body, just like any other sport, their body will shut down. Uh, you are gonna run into problems if you just pretend it doesn't exist. There's been multiple people with wrist injuries throughout my 15 year career. You know, I was more of an arm guy. So, you know, my movements were more arm and then you got wrist people that, that's all they do, these little, these little wrist micro movements. They're ending up with some carpal tunnel or some stress related injuries. I think a lot of people take for granted um, the toll it takes to be a gamer, right? It, it's considered this sedentary, um, non-active type of activity. You know, I've been in gaming 16 years now and, and I've seen a lot of really good gamers be sidelined. As far as mental health, I've suffered with, you know, depression, being a gamer on the road pretty much my entire life. So um, I do know the telltale signs of depression. I've lived it. Um, so, you know, if I do notice any of my players kind of being reclusive, um, not talking a lot, you know, I'll go over and ask them how they feel, you know, and try to try to dig in a little bit. That's all you can really do is communicate with people, you know, ask them to, you know, be honest with you when they're not feeling well. If, you know, you just have to build that trust up, up enough that they feel comfortable talking to you about these things. It's professional gamers, it's professional uh, workers in the gaming space that are constantly on the road. Um, not always rewarded, you know, sometimes it's a very unrewarding industry. You do a lot of work and you don't get a lot of credit. It just leads to scenarios where people can kind of slip into depression. Each player, I think, has a different routine. I'm a big fan of listening to music and just kind of settling down my nerves a little bit. Treating my arm, making sure that I feel comfortable going into the, the game. And then also mentally, just deep breathing before the game, making sure that I'm fully prepared. I learned this pretty late. No one really told me about finding that routine and making sure you do that routine every time you play because I feel like having that routine just kind of puts your mind at rest. So it can really affect some players. So I think both sides of it, physically and the mental aspect of preparing for games is, is pretty important. So currently the average age of an esports athlete ranges anywhere between as low as 12 and then can extend usually just about before 30 depending on what title you're talking about. I do think you'll see that number increase and we're already seeing that in general, the 28 to 30 thing going up to maybe even close to 35. For me as a gamer, made it very hard when our salaries were only 1500 to 2000 a month. Um, so my priorities changed to where the money wasn't good enough for me to pursue it. That problem's kind of been solved nowadays where gamers are making great career type money, but the travel, I mean, that's not ever gonna be resolved. There's a huge tournament schedule yearly, and in general, traveling and burnout is the number one career killer, in my opinion. Like, there's only so many flights you can sit on before you start to question how much you love what you're doing. Couple in the fact that maybe your team's struggling, maybe you're not winning, maybe you find yourself on a tier two team and it's not as lucrative as it was before. I think that's why the careers end is it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard on the body, it's hard on the mind. Gamer fitness is something that we've taken for granted for far too long. All organizations need to be looking, how can we add value to a gamer's career by focusing on nutrition, by focusing on a wholesome, healthy lifestyle, by focusing on proper preventative maintenance and care. So we partnered with Baylor Scott & White, 
which is just across the street. I don't know how many teams might have a sports hospital right across the street to make sure we're learning proper ways to stretch, we're learning proper ways to sit, and we're learning and constantly improving on how we take care of our gamers for their long-term health and well-being. I actually got to go to Baylor Scott, which was which was an awesome experience. They obviously treat normally they treat people that are in traditional sports. They can break down pretty much everything, like how how your shoulders are moving, your joints, and everyone's going to have different problems, and every problem is unique. For me, when I went over there, they realized that my wrist and my arm was an issue, and they really focused on that, and they gave me a plan that I can use personally to improve my health. And this is where things are changing, where players can actually get the treatment that traditional sports professionals do. Complexity has a lot going for us over here, especially on the side of player recovery. The one that interests me the most right now, to be honest, is over at Baylor Scott & White, where they're offering some cryotherapy to our players. Well, cryotherapy is a great way to jumpstart the recovery process. Recovery is one of the most important parts of, or just as important as, as training and nutrition. You can come in and get into the cryo chamber and literally in three minutes, you've went through that, that recovery process. It gets so cold so fast, reaching minus 276 degrees, and your cells, they constrict, and your blood is pushed into out of your extremities and into your core. And when it goes back to your extremities, it's oxygenated and filtered and helps remove the inflammation. And when you've had a long training session, your muscles are fatigued, you get in the cryo chamber and come back and train longer and compete harder. So to specifically address some of the issues with, with mental and physical health within eSports, the decompression porch, for example, where we provide access to things as advanced as Normatec compression technology, but also the fact that there's natural lighting and these beautiful red Congolese philodendrons that can help relax the mind. The nap part is really intentional for us. The calming music, the vibration, the closing off the rest of the world with the visor. I mean, this is really an escape uh, from some of the other obligations. The decompression porch was created as a place where our players can really just relax. They can reset, they can refocus. We have a physical representation of, of how much we prioritize their overall mental health. This is really about a 360 initiative of ours, so that we're treating them as, as whole people. And the more and more we look at it like that, I think the more and more success this industry has when we prioritize wellness. And I think as organizations, we're responsible for a lot of that. And if we can be, okay, hey, wait a second, let's take a step back, but there is a problem, and I think it needs to be addressed now versus later. Even at this event we just went to, we're playing at MIBR, we're in the third map, I remember telling the team, envision yourself winning this game. Ricky came up to me after the game, which was really cool, and he said, I'm so glad you said that about envisioning winning, because he said it helped him massively. So that was really cool to see that tiny little things are, I think, what makes players feel comfortable. Uh, they play for the team instead of playing for themselves, and I think that's the kind of stuff we're really homing in on right now. Very important to us that we focused on the whole well-being of, of the player. How are they living? How are they eating? How are they training? How can we come alongside our players and, and help give them a wholesome experience as a lifestyle? And look, I think honestly, if you're a player, if I'm a player, I'm taking a really hard look in my environment, what's being provided me, what's being prioritized around me. We're trying to build something that ensures we're here, our players are here for 10, 15, 20, 30, forever. If I was a player, like I'd be looking over at our facilities and what we're doing and what we have to offer. Any player coming into my team has access to two meals a day, the same place the Cowboys players and coaches eat. They have a Cowboys Fit membership. They get health insurance. You know, we have medical facilities like the Baylor Scott and White facility right across the street. We have it all over here and we're going to continue adding on and uh, making this the best place for gamers to want to play.